Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about a crypto no-name challenge from the Volga CTF qualifiers. The description is, I have no name, I am but two days old, and we get an encrypted and an encryptor file. So let's copy these links. And W get the files. And then take a look at them. So our encrypted text is some base 64 string. Let's see what that looks like when we base 64 decrypt it. Well, it looks like garbage. And then we have our encrypted encryptor file. So from the imports, we see that it's probably going to use AES and MD5. The flag is something that we can't get, and it's going to use time. So the first thing it's going to do is going to generate a key, and the key is going to be uh, an MD5 hash of the current time. We're going to uh, take the current time and make it an integer. Uh, that means that we're going to cut off everything uh, more specific than a second. And that's what we're going to hash. Now, uh, this looks very interesting because the description of the challenge is I am but two days old. So the flag is not older than two days, which means that it was probably created uh, when the time was two days from now, which is definitely interesting. Um, so from that, at that point, I already thought mm, we're going to have to brute force this key somehow with the time. Then we have this uh, padding that's being used. Um, so we're going to take the length of the flag, remove that, remove that from 16, and then uh, modulo with 16 um, to make it between 0 and 16 again. Then we're going to create our AES object using that key in the ECB mode. Now this mode shouldn't be used. It's fundamentally uh, not secure. So that's also interesting. And then we're going to actually encrypt the flag add our padding to it, uh, so the amount uh, and what our padding is actually going to be is the hex representation of that padding. Now, uh, when I was solving this challenge for the first time, I uh, tried to running this code a bit, I made some fake flags to see what would come out, and I noticed something. Uh, let's say we try to run this, so let's make a padding, let's make a padding of 4. If we run this, we get an error saying odd length string. Now, why is that an error? Well, if we... Um... Now, this decode function expects a, um, a string with, uh, for example, it expects something like this, and then we can decode that to hex. Right. Um, so, the, but what happens when we just give it four? Well, it gives us this odd length string error. Now, when is this padding going to? When is this part going to result in something that is two characters long? Well, only when the padding is actually higher than sixteen. Right, because then it's going to start with one zero and one one and so on. So, for a padding below fifteen. This is uh, b below 16. This is always going to give an error. Now we already established here that our padding is going to be between a length of 0 and 16. So this means that the person that used this program to encrypt the flag had to had, have given a flag that made sure that this resulted in 16. Now when does this result in 16? Let's um, make a fake flag, see what happens. Well, this results in 7. When does it result in 16? Let's see. Well, when it's 0, when the flag is length of 0. When the flag, the flag is length of 16, 32, and so on. For 33, this is going to be 15, right? So it only works for a flag that has a length that is a multiple of 16. And that's very important because we are encrypting the flag, which is a multiple of 16, and the padding, which is also going to be length 16. Now, if you know anything about ECB, you probably know that it has a block size of 16. Now, what exactly does that mean? 
well, I'll show you. Let's create a fake key for a second. Uh, AES, we need to import. Okay, now we have our AES object. Let's AES and crypt a uh, fake flag. So let's say this is our flag. Make that length 16. And then we'll add a padding of B, which is also going to be of length 16. Now, that's what that looks like. But let's say we don't have the flag and we just encrypt this padding. Well, do you notice how these 16 bytes are the same as these 16 bytes here? Because a, a ECB AES encrypts block per block, right? And we, at, we use the same key, so the same block is going to result in the same output. So that means that from this, this padding, that we know what it is, because padding is always going to be 16. So let's actually see what that looks like. So that's going to be this. If we encrypt this with the correct key, that's going to end up being the uh, same as the last 16 bytes from this Basic 64 decoded. Now, the only thing we're lacking is the key. But now we have a way of figuring out if a guess key, a key that we guess, is correct. And this is where the whole time thing comes into play, because the, the key is made using the time and the key was made less than two days ago. So what if we try all the possible keys from two days ago until now? Uh, we create the AES object with that, we encrypt our padding and we see if that's the same as the last 16 bytes of our encrypted text. Will we get a correct key? If we get a correct key, then we can use that key to decrypt the whole message. So let's give that a go. We're going to exit out of our Python shell. We're going to touch uh, brute.py and we'll start typing. So we're going to add a shebang line, which is going to be user bin and Python. We're going to need the time module. We're going to need the base64 module to decode our um, encrypted text. We're going to need MD5 to create the key. And then we're going to need AES. So that's crypto dot. So that's not a dot. Dot cipher and import AES. So let's make this a proper file. So we'll do if name equals main we'll call our main function so what's going to happen in here first of all we're going to set our padding make that be equal to that then we're going to open our file and crypt it well we got to open that And we're going to set our encrypted text equal to base64 dot base64 decode um, file dot read line. So we're going to decode that. Now we want the last 16 bytes of that. So wanted and equals encrypted and the last 16 by uh, characters of that. Now we are going to grab the current time, which is going to be equal to an integer of time dot time. So we grab the seconds. Then we want the time that it was two days ago, or actually the challenge, uh, the CTF is already a day old. So we're going to grab the time from three days ago, just to be sure. So we're going to remove Um, that should be a day and that should be three days. Now we can loop through that. So for I in range from the previous time to the current time. Let's make a nice UI because when whenever I'm brute forcing, I always like to uh, send a message to just show myself that my program is actually doing something. Okay. Now we can create a key. So we're going to have to MD5 hash 
our um, our number, our, the time that we're guessing, and then we gotta grab the digest of that. So that's our key. Then we can make our AES object. It's gonna be AES dot new. This is gonna have our key, and then it's gonna have AES dot mode ECB. Now we can use that to actually encrypt uh, our padding. Now, if the encrypted padding is equal to the last 16, 16 bytes of our encryption, that means we found the key and that we can actually decrypt the whole file to get uh, the actual flag of the challenge. So let's use our key to decrypt our encrypted text and then we'll break out of the loop because we've got what we wanted. So I believe that should be it. Let's see if that runs. We have no attribute encrypted. Uh, that should be encrypt. Okay, it's running and it has found a key, which is this, this is the key. We use that to decrypt the actual file and the actual file says uh, Volga CTF sometimes brute force is the easiest way and indeed it is. And that was this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay inside, stay safe, wash those hands and I'll see you back in another one. Thanks for watching.